Well, Terry, we got your 280SC up on the hoist, and I just wanted to show you that the um, right rear wheel brake caliper is leaking brake fluid. And these brake calipers go bad when the car sits a long time and they start to leak from the piston seals uh, on the caliper. And basically you need to replace these rear calipers. Um, the brake pads are also completely finished. You can see the pads here are um, <laughs> almost bare metal to metal on the uh, brake disc. And this is the brake disc right here. This brake disc has actually been machined. Um, at some point these rotors were taken off and resurfaced and these rotors are actually below minimum spec so we're going to recommend that you put uh, new rotors, new brake pads and uh, new brake caliper hoses and also change the calipers and in the rear and that way you know the, they won't leak anymore. Um, the right rear one is the one that's leaking but you, you should change your calipers and sets so that the car does not pull when you brake. Um, I'm going to email you an estimate for that and we'll move on to the next item. Terry, we have uh, the front of the car here and I just wanted to show you that the front brake pads are also finished. Um, the, the wear plate um, right here, this is the brake, brake caliper wear plate and the brake pads are touching the wear plate which means the front brake pads are finished. I would change the front brake pads as well uh, when we do the brakes on the car. Um, both the front and the rear brakes are completely finished. The, um, the car also has a radiator leak. I don't know if you can see it, but this is actually the signs here that the car has been leaking coolant for quite some time. And that's because the bottom coolant tank right here in this area is actually leaking coolant really badly. When the car's, I guess, the, or I should say the cooling system's pressurized, it leaks coolant from this area. And you can see that it's been leaving, leaking coolant for quite some time. So the radiator is going to need to be repaired, sent out and repaired. I'll, I can send you an estimate to have that fixed. The other thing I want to point out to you is that this battery is actually not installed properly. It's missing the battery hold down brackets and typically the battery hold down brackets on this side of the battery and it's it's not even there. So the battery is just sitting on the trach um, not even the right way. Somebody put this battery in a hurry and the battery is just completely loose and um, if you were to probably brake really hard one day or take a really sharp turn the battery could you know flop around so um, I would suggest you get a battery hold down bracket for this for this battery. Terry the other thing I'm going to show you under the car is that the motor mount are starting to get low and typically when the motor mount gets low um, it, it, it starts to cause the car to idle a little rough especially when you're not moving and I don't know if you can see the LED but that's the part of the motor mount that's collapsed and eventually it'll cause a vibration when the car is just idling at a light. So you're going to need both the left and right side mounter mount. This is the left side. The opposite side, I don't know if you can see, it's kind of dark. Um, but if you, if, you, if you can't see it, uh, just know that it looks exactly like this left one. And the left one is in bad shape. I would recommend that you do change the motor mount soon. Um, it, it, but if you don't notice anything like a rough idle, then you can wait on that. You don't have to change it right away. The other thing I was going to show you here is that the uh, tie rods, the tie rods are going to need to be replaced. This tie rod right here has a torn boot. That's the uh, outer tie rod on the right side. And the tie rod that's located right here, right there in that image, that's the inner tie rod on the right side. The boot is broken on that. So you need to change the right tie rod assembly. Also, I recommend changing the steering dampener which is this part right here. It actually has no resistance. We should change the steering dampener. Um, this, uh, this tie rod assembly is also, the boot on it is broken. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but that's where the boot's broken on that tie rod. So uh, we recommend changing at least the left and right side tie rods and the steering dampener on the steering linkages. Terry, the other thing I was gonna show you is that the uh, transmission is starting to uh, leak oil. You can see that this, this, this is a sign of the transmission's been leaking for quite some time. You can see that drip right there. But you have a transmission pan gasket leak, and I'm gonna recommend that you have the transmission um, pan gasket replaced, and if we're gonna do that, you might as well service the transmission. But it's been leaking oil quite some time. You can see there's a lot of oil residue on the bottom of this transmission. So, and this is fairly typical for cars that sit a lot, but it looks like it's been leaking for quite some time. So this is why I'm recommending that you service the transmission and put a new filter and pan gasket. 
The other thing I noticed is that these fuel injector lines, hoses, um, they don't have the, the correct clamps on them. So what's going to happen is these hose clamps are going to tear into the fuel injector hoses and make holes in them. And the hoses themselves are starting to crack. I don't know if you can notice here, but right here at the very top of this injector hose, the lines are starting to crack because these clamps are over crimping the hoses the way they are. These hoses are actually not the, per the, the exact fit hoses for these fuel injectors. So what I see happening in the near foreseeable future is that on very cold days, these injectors will start to leak fuel. And you'll get a fuel smell when you first start the car in the morning. And you can try and tighten these hose clamps and the fuel leak may stop. But the real correction would be to change these fuel line hoses to the exact size fuel injector line fitting and also the correct hose clamps for these injector injectors. The engine fan shroud is missing. Um, you don't have an engine fan shroud uh, on this radiator so in the summertime this radiator will probably not cool as well as it could. So when you do have the radiator repaired make sure you get a, a fan shroud for this radiator. So another thing Terry I wanted to point out to you is that there's supposed to be a little windshield washer tank right there. The windshield washer tank is missing. Um, what happens with these tanks is because of the heat of the engine they just deteriorate, break in half like uh, tostadas and uh, then they get thrown away. But you're missing a, a windshield washer tank and, and uh, you're also missing the windshield washer uh, lines to get the squirters working. And it, since we're at it you may need a windshield washer pump because it looks as if though the system's been bypassed for a very long time, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't um, be surprised if that windshield washer pump is bad as well. Terry, there's two two little uh, radiator hangers that are missing off the radiator. It's supposed to attach to right there on the radiator, and it also attaches to this bracket that's right here, and it's a pretty big um, donut that a rubber donut that surrounds it uh, itself onto that holding clamp and also onto the radiator itself so that the radiator doesn't jump around when you go over bumps. So what happens is when you do have a fan shroud, which is probably why the fan shroud's not here right now, is that when you do have a fan shroud on the car, those, those little donuts prevent the shroud from breaking when the engine fan <laughs> hits it. So um, I, would, I would definitely get a radiator mount kit installed so that when you do put a fan shroud on, the fan shroud won't break like the old one did here and um, and that way you can preserve the life of your fan shroud when you do get one. Terry, the other thing I want to point out to you is that this uh, brake booster hose right here has been repaired at some time and they put a rubber hose in place of a, a clear plastic hose that goes here so this brake booster hose is original. This Well half of it's original and this part is not. So we were going to recommend that you change uh, the brake booster hose because this half here could break at any time. So um, I would recommend that you put a new brake booster hose. I'm trying to locate one for you right now and I'll let you know the cost of that.